بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين وبارئ الأنبياء والمرسلين that you see specifically on this Shaman and Garima switch off the lights everywhere this is how it is and on Azakhan this darkness this switching off of the lights is basically a reflectiveness or an indication to an incident that took place in Karbala, in Shama Gariba. He says, Shama Gariba, it is an Ajib Sham. Garibo ki Sham. Those without any houses, strangers, the evening of the strangers. It's an ajib night. Because now Zainab does not have Hussein. The children do not have the comfort of Abbas. <coughs> There's nobody to guard the tents. That sukoon is not there. And you know why this is taking place? We switch off these lights because when hatred and malice reaches its peak, then the consequences, what was done by the forces of Yazid, when <coughs> humanity goes so low so as to leave no difference between humans and animals, then what happens in Sham al happens. The afternoon of Ashura is done. Hussein has been murdered. Abbas is no longer there. Qasim is gone. On oh, no, Muhammad have gone. Just 24 hours ago, the entire family that was gathered together under the leadership of Hussein and Zainab had the solace that I've got somebody above me. I got somebody to look after, I got somebody who looks after me, who's looking after the events, who's looking after the circumstances in the form of Hussein, in the form of Abbas, in the form of Ali Akbar, within 24 hours, the whole world of Zainab changes. Because all of a sudden now Zainab becomes the leader of the bank. 
the guarding that was supposed to be done by Abbas is not being done by Zainab. The comfort that is being given to the children by Hussein or that was being given to the children by Hussein is now to be being given by, Hussein, by Zainab. The world of Zainab changes in 24 hours. But the reason this has happened is the enemies, the forces of Yazid after the Shahadat of Hussein, this did not stop at that. After the Shahadat of Hussein, when there is no male member in that entire entourage except one old, apparently seemingly old, 24-year-old young man by the name of Zainul Abidin, Sayyidu Sajidin, who is so sick on his bed that he cannot even move out of the bed without support. You heard them, the Ashur. When Zainab could not see Hussein, she rushed to the Imam Abbaq, the Imam Zainul Abidin, and asking him, where is Hussein? You know how he walked to the tent? He had to put one arm around his aunt's neck, and she had to carry him towards the tent so that he could move out and see what is happening. This is the man that is remaining, only one man. But the events that take place beat all logic, beat all sense of humanity. Because after everybody is killed, all the males are killed, they do not suffice with that. The enemies, you have the forces of Yazid, do not suffice with that. They bring an assault into the tents. So they would go into the tents and set fire to the tents. These tents contain whom? As I mentioned, one young man who appears to be old but is so sick, cannot walk, cannot move out without support. But all the others are ladies. And all the others are little, little children. The enemies came after the Shahadat of Hussein. They started setting fire to the tents. As they would set, the tents were placed around each other. They would place fire, they would place the first tent on fire. As the fire would encompass and engulf the tent, the girls, the children, the ladies of those tents would come running out and move into the other tent. When they would move into the other tent, these people would go to the second tent and set it on fire. All the people of the first and second tent would turn and then move into the third tent. They kept doing this till all the tents were burnt, only one tent remained. In this tent, in this tent there was Umm Kultum and there was Zainab. In this tent there were Umm Kultum and Zainab and Rukaiya and all the others. In this, Eventually all the people were gathered into one tent. All the other tents have been burnt down. Now this tent contains Zainab, Omekultum, Raba, Layla, Farwa, Sakina, children. All of them can gather together in one tent. Eventually this tent is also set on fire. When this tent is set on fire, now listen to this tradition of Hamid ibn Muslim. Hamid ibn Muslim is narrating that as the tents began to be set on fire, I saw people coming out from one tent into the other and from the second into the third till all of them gathered together into the, th into the last tent. When the last tent remained, these enemies came, these nefarious people came without heart, without mind, without any sort of compassion and set the last tent on fire. As the last tent was set on fire, Hamid ibn Muslim says, I saw them setting them, the tent on fire. When the tent was set on fire, initially nobody came out, but when they came out, all of them came out. All of them came out running. Now, how they came out, 
in what manner they came out somebody in Medina after this event and then the entire Kafla reaches Medina and Imam Sajjad is in Medina somebody in the course of conversation asks the Imam says Yabna Rasulullah just tell us when that last tent was set on fire how did your family come out of it Rawayat says he had a tasbih in his hand he says my friend you've asked me a very grave question about the tents being set on fire look at this tasbih if this rope of the tasbih were to break how would the beads scatter away this is how my entire family got scattered away in Karbala when that last tent was set on fire children coming out of the tent because now the tent is burning all the other tents have been burnt down little little children they don't know what to do some have gone towards the Maktar some have gone towards Furat the ladies are running after the children where are the children where are my children where are the little little boys where are the little little girls but Hamid ibn Muslim says when I saw these people all of a sudden coming out as the fourth Imam said scattered like beads of tasbih at one time the last person to come out I saw and I was very surprised that the last person to come out was a small girl a four-year-old girl, I immediately recognized this girl. This girl was Sakina bint al Hussein. But as she came out, I saw a strange sight that as she came out, because the tent had been set on fire, the cloth of her dress, the end, the rims, the hems of her dress had caught fire. And there was fire at the edge of her dress. Now the dress is on fire, but this girl is coming out and this Hamid is saying, I don't know, she was so obsessed with certain grief that she kept beating her chest and kept crying out, Oh my uncle Abbas, where are you? Oh my Baba Hussein, where are you? Oblivious of the fact that her clothes were burning, said I, Hamid says, I saw this small girl in a state of grief, but I realized she was in danger of getting burned because of the fire. I stepped forward to hold the dress to switch off the fire. As soon as she saw, saw my hand moving forward in that state of fire, in that state of grief, alone in the darkness of the night, this girl, as soon as she sees my hand coming forward, she steps back and says, don't touch me. Don't touch me. I am the granddaughter of Fatima to Zahra. No, now my haram touches me. Don't even dare to touch me. I fold my hands. Amit is saying, I fold my hands. And I tell her, I don't want to touch you. All that I want to do is put out this fire that has caught your clothes or it will burn you. When she saw that, she agreed. I switched off that I put off the fire. Then she's telling me, oh Mohsin, oh person who has done a favor to me, can you do me one more favor? I said, please tell me if there is any way I can help you. She says, can you show me the way to Najaf? <laughs> He said, can you show me the way to Najaf? Now, Hamid is saying, I'm surprised. This is the darkness of the night. The tents are burnt. The, the, the ladies are running helter-skelter. I just put out the fire. There's nobody to support her. Instead of seeking assistance, she's asking me, where is the road to Najaf? So again, I fold my hands and tell her, oh girl, oh princess, where do you want to go in Najaf? Why do you want to know the way of Najaf? She says, you don't know. But I will tell you, in Najaf, my grand Grandfather Ali Murtaza is over there, and I know this Ali Murtaza is referred to as Muski Mushkil Kusha. He goes to the help of all the Yatim. I want to go to Najaf and I want to cling to the grave and ask my grandfather, Oh, grandfather, you are the Muskil Kusha. You go to the grave of every Yatim, but you've never come to me to Sakina to help. You've never helped this Yatim of Hussein. <laughs> the children are scattered. <coughs> some have gone towards Furat, some have gone towards the battlefield. Now, now you remember, right? There is no Hussein anymore. There is no Abbas anymore. The entire Afla, the entire entourage, the entire caravan comes under the leadership of Zainab. Zainab starts collecting the, stool, the, the, the children. She tells Umar Khulsu, this tent was burned. The, the children got scared, they got scattered into the battlefield and into Furat. We need to go to pick them up. Come Umm Kulsum, let us go. Zainab, Umm Kulsum, both the street sisters start moving out. As they find a the child, they would pick him up. Some children sitting on the ground, 
crying, they would bring the lamb, put them at a place. There is no tent anymore. There are no tents anymore. Everything has been raised to the ground. They keep them near the ashes of the tents. Some children, they find sleeping near the trees. They would wake them up, bring them and put them near the places where they collected the children. As they kept going, as they kept going, one suddenly relaxes, they come across two children sleeping under, a, under, under, some, the, under some wild bushes, cactus bushes. As they see them, Zainab tells him, "May Kulsum go slowly. These children appear to have gone to sleep. Let us not wake them up. We will carry them and we put them. If they wake up, they will get frightened. Slowly they approach the children. But as they approach and come near to them, Zainab realizes these are not children who are sleeping. Because all of a sudden she sees on the chest of these children marks of the hooves of the horses, realizing that these have been trampled. Now she tells Zainab, Zainab tells Umme Kulsum, these are not sleeping. These children have died. Let us pick them up. As she's about to pick up, now her heart is filled with grief. Now the intensity of the task strikes her. She turns to Furat and tells her, Bas, Bas, now that you are not there, look at Zainab. She also has to pick up the lash of children. <laughs> they pick up all these children and bring them back to one place. As they get the children, as they are brought back, they pick all up the children. Count. One, two, three, four, full on, full on, full on. As she is counting and she reaches the end, she realizes something else. She begins again. One, two, three, four, full on, full on, full on. And then at the end again she stops. She turns to Umme Kulsum. Umme Kulsum, Wabaila. Umme Kulsum, Wabaila, where is my Sakina? I can't find my Sakina. Just a couple of hours ago, when Hussein was going away, he had given me the Sivarish to take care of my Sakina. I can't see my Sakina. You go towards the battlefield, uh, you go towards Furat, I will go towards the battlefield. I have to find Sakina. What will I answer? Hussein, if he comes into me in my dreams and asks me, what did you do with my Sakina? Kumme <laughs> Kulsum goes towards Furat. As she is searching, she has suddenly stumbles on, on the dead body of her boss. And her sister looking at the body of her brother. Hands are severe. May Allah never show the sight to any, any sister about a dead body of her brother with arms bro, arms cut. Over there, Zainab is in the, in the battlefield. She's trying to look around the dead bodies. Where is Sakina? Hey, Saina Sukaina. Aina Sukaina. Where are you, Sukaina? Tell me, where are you? Your aunt is coming to take you. Sukaina did not reply. But at a certain distance, into a certain depth, in the place where there was an assumed killing of Hussein, from there, there was a beheaded Lasha, a Lasha without head. And Zainab suddenly hears from that Lasha a voice coming, Zainab, talk softly. My Sakina is sleeping with me. She looks into that small little depression and this is exactly what she sees. Hussein's body without the head lying inside that depression and Sakina sleeping on the chest of Hussein. You remember I told you in the afternoon Sakina loved to sleep on the chest of Hussein. She would like to sleep on the chest of Hussein. Your Zainab is seeing Hussein's beheaded body and Sakina sleeping on the body. She slowly wakes up Sakina. Zaina wakes up Sakina. Sakina get up. Sakina get up. Sakina wakes up. Yes, Auntie, what is it? Saying you can't sleep over here. You need to go back to where the others are. But he's saying, but why can I not sleep over here? Where are you taking me? Saying I'm taking you to where the others are. But why can I not sleep over here? With my father. He's saying, no, you cannot sleep in the desert like this. This is not the place to sleep. Sakina turns to Zainab and says, but my father is also sleeping here. But my father is sleeping here, so why can I not sleep here? <laughs> Zainab tells Sakina, you cannot sleep here. Let your father sleep. Let us go to the to where the other children are. As they are going, suddenly something strikes Zainab. Something strikes Zainab. She turns to Sakina and says, Sakina, tell me one thing. How did you recognize that that body was that of Hussain? How did you recognize that that body was the body of your father? Normally a body is recognized by what? By the face? By the head? Or by the clothes? There was no head of Hussain, it was cut and taken away. The clothes was not there because the clothes were stolen by the people over there. How did you recognize that body? 
Sakina says, Auntie, I'll tell you what happened. When the bell went, the last tent was burnt. And as I moved out, Shimra started slapping me. Shim started beating me. To escape from his beatings, I ran into the battlefield, crying out, Oh my Baba, help me. Oh my Baba, help me. Shimra is beating me. I kept going till all of a sudden I heard a sound coming from this body. Ilaya, Ilaya, come to me, my Sakina. Come, my chest is waiting for you. Come and sleep on me. I went over and went to sleep onto the chest of my father. <laughs> Sakina, Zaina, just Sakina, let us go. Sakina has brought all the children are stationed. She keeps over them. Now, it is a fact that in Shyam el Dariba eventually water comes. In Shyam el Dariba, water comes. Somebody brings the water. As that water came, say the Sajja takes the water and goes to his aunt. He's saying, Aunt Zainab, water was come, please drink it. <laughs> Zainab says, I cannot drink the water. <laughs> Say this is to Zainab, Aunt Zainab, water was come, please drink it. <laughs> Zainab says, Sajjad, you are asking me to drink the water. <laughs> this is that same water for which my Asghar died. <laughs> this is the same water for which Akbar once went to the battlefield and then came again to ask my brother, is there any water? This is the same water for which Owner Muhammad died thirsty and Qasim died. I cannot drink it. Sajjad says, Aunt, drink it, please. She's saying, but why are you insisting so much? I don't want to drink it. Now this is the reward I've heard from Olam. Saying, as he says, as she says this, Sajjad says, okay, Aunt, you don't want to drink it? Now listen, I'm going to show you something. Saying this, he rubbed his hands over his eyes and says, look into the sky. By the ayajas and the miracle of Imamat, she suddenly sees a portion of the skies open out and she sees a, a, a place in paradise, a place near the Kautha, where there's Holy Prophet sitting over there, where there's Imam Ali sitting over there, where there is Hassan sitting over there, and then there is Sayyid, and then there is uh, Imam Hussain sitting over there, and Bibi Zainab sitting, and Bibi uh, Fatima sitting, all five Panstana sitting over there. And the situation is like this, that Hussein is the signature of all eyes, Hussein is in the center, the Holy Prophet brings the pool, the, the, the water of Kautha, comes to Hussein and says, Hussein, your examination is finished, <laughs> now drink the water, my son. <laughs> Zainab is watching this, huh? <laughs> Zainab is watching. <laughs> Hussein says, Ya Rasulullah, I can't drink the water. I can't drink the water. <laughs> Ali comes, puts his hand on Hussein's head. My son Hussein, drink it, Baba. The world, the Imtihan of the world is finished. You drink it. He says, No, I cannot drink it. In the end, Fatima to Zahra comes to her son. Says, Oh, my son, I've been watching all that you've gone through. I've seen everything that you've done. Please, this is a request of the mother. Take this water. Three days of her thirst and hunger. Oh, my son, drink the water. Hussein says, oh, my, I cannot drink the water. Fatima asks, but why can you not drink? The Prophet is asking you. Ali is asking you. I am asking you. Why can you not drink? And Hussein says, oh, my, I cannot drink. My Zainab is thirsty. I cannot drink the water till Zainab does not drink. Sajjad tells Zainab, Aunt Zainab, till for so long as you don't drink the water, my my father on top will remain thirsty. Now Zainab does not say anything. She takes the water, but she still doesn't drink. She goes first to Sakina. So Sakina, now in this meantime, Sakina has just fallen asleep. She wakes up Sakina. Sakina get up. Sakina gets up. What is it, Auntie? He's saying, Sakina, water has come. Just understand the philosophy of the island. This girl three days hungry and thirsty. The whole of Ashura, she's been watching things taking place. She's seen her father die. She's seen her chacha die. She's seen everybody kill. She's seen the tents burn. She is tired. She is frightened. She is thirsty. As soon as Zainab comes and says, Sakina, get up. She asks, what is it? Sing Zain, Sakina, water has come. No normal reaction would be, the water has come. Please, can I have water? I'm very thirsty. But what does Sakina say? Sakina says, does it mean my Abbas has come? Has my Jaja Abbas come that you're talking, the water has come? Zainab says, Sakina, Abbas has not come, but the water has come. Take, drink the water. 
She says, no, I will not drink. I think even you are as thirsty. If not, no, you drink the water. Zainab says, Sakina, listen, you must drink the water. She says, but why me? Give it to, give it to my brother, say the Sajjad. He's sick, he's sick. He's in a state of fever. Let him drink it. So Zainab says, no, it is you who have to drink it. Because it is a dastur, it is the rule of our family, that the smallest who is there, who is thirsty, drinks the water first. Now Zainab, Sakina doesn't say anything. She takes that water bottle, but now she doesn't drink. She takes the water and goes towards the battlefield. As she is going towards the battlefield, Zainab is, is, is confused. So Sakina, I gave you water to drink it, where are you going? Sakina says, but aunt, you gave me the rule, you gave me the formula, that the smallest who is thirsty needs to be given the water and my brother Ali Asghar the smallest amongst us he is thirsty how can I drink the water before him I am going to give this water to my Ali Asghar hey Asghar where are you water has come Matam Yusin Masiyah Alamu Alladheena Balla Ayyamun Khadir Yamfur